Who here has had shoulder pain? Okay. We're going to talk about common maladies, but I really want to talk about what to consider when working with shoulder injuries as far as safety. So um, there's a lot to consider. There's a lot going on here. So you have uh, muscles, tendons, ligaments, the joint capsule, disease processes, or side effects from treatment, like radiation, and then congenital issues, like lax ligaments. So possible causes of shoulder issues, dysfunctional movement patterns, asymmetry, and then usage patterns, meaning mechanical overuse. Um, I'm going to use a dental hygienist as an example. This sort of thing over and over. Nothing wrong, but it's going to create imbalance from side to side. Or someone who, who is a construction worker and they're doing, you know, drills with one arm, and they're never, which I wouldn't say use your left arm because then God knows what could happen. <laughs> Um, so those are things to, and, and it's very telling what someone does for a living. You know, are you sitting at a desk all day? That's going to have one sort of impact. So you want to start with simple, non-intrusive movements. Simple and move from there. So I'll, I'll teach a lot where we do the variation of Tadasana where we raise the arms overhead or we raise the arms out and over the head. If someone has shoulder issues and that hurts, because it's a balancing pose, so you don't necessarily want them falling and landing and hurting their shoulder more, so this could be their variation. We are coming down and up like that. And that's not really messing with the rotator cuff too much. Mm. Weight-bearing versus non-weight-bearing poses. If there's injury, you always want to start with non-weight-bearing. Does that make sense? And then when you do go to weight bearing, you're not going to go to side plank or even down dog. You're going to go to chakra vakasana or plank at the wall if you're really wanting to work someone, not plank, but like a push up at the wall. Work towards getting someone back to strength. You're not going to necessarily put them on the floor first thing. So the question was, would we, we're avoiding weight bearing for an injury, but would be a would we be avoiding weight wear wow <laughs> weight bearing for pain and i would say yes because we don't know what that pain is from i check in before class and say you know and if they have shoulder issues i'll say you know you might really not want to do down dog i never teach chaturangas anymore i will teach plank or plank on the elbows who here has tried to tell someone not to do down dog and and it's almost like you've punched their mother in the face. Yeah. You're like, um, okay, so we're a little attached to down dog, sorry. And then you see them in down dog and you have a hemorrhage because you're like, uh. <laughs> and, and it's walking that line. I've gotten to pretty much in all my classes, I'll say if you want to do down dog, feel free. Or come into a, from Chakra Vakasana, walk your hands back, come into a standing forward bin. Because some people really like their down dog. And I'll even say, like say I have, like I work at a studio that just merged with another studio that was much more active. So I have some more active people coming to my classes. I want them to get what they want out of their practice. So I'll say, you know, if you want to move through a flow, feel free. I don't take you through the entire flow because it's not good for everyone in the room. That way they get to have their thing, unless you see something that's like, Ugh. Then you'll go and work with them privately on how not to hurt themselves. You know, even pulling them aside after class, like, gee, this could really hurt you. And then that open frame versus closed frame. Down dog would be closed. Um, but drossing on your knees where you're raising the arms up and then bringing them behind you would be open. So thinking of it from that standpoint. F free movement to increase range of motion.